I'm with Bavarian Knifeworks, and today we're going to do Knife Skills 101, so you can use your new knife set safely and efficiently. First, let's talk about choice of a cutting board. My personal preference is bamboo. The reason for that is it's naturally antibacterial and it's self-sealing, so when you cut on it, the cuts seal up automatically, making it safe for food use. We need to do is stabilize our cutting board so it doesn't slide around when we use it. The way we do that is we take a piece of paper towel and just wet it a little bit. And now it doesn't move. So now I'm going to talk about how to hold the knife correctly and what to do with your other hand. This is a pinch and this is a claw. We call it a pinch and claw. We want to pinch the bottom of the blade and wrap three fingers around the handle. That's how you hold a knife. Not like this, because it can be unstable, but like this, and not back here. You want pinching fingers on the blade, and the other hand makes the claw, and the claw goes 90 degrees to the blade, so that it guides the knife. So, I want to show you how I determine whether a knife is sharp enough or not. I do what's called the cut on contact test, which means I try to make a small crease in a tomato, and if it cuts it, it's sharp enough. If it slides on it, it's not sharp enough. It should cut on contact. So let's say you did the cut on contact test and you failed. The knife slid on the tomato without cutting it. What do we do? Well, this is our knife edge. When you cut anything, it's microscopically a curve. You can't see it, but you can feel it, and that's when it slides instead of cutting. Then we have a honing steel and a diamond steel in your set. The purpose of the honing steel is to straighten that edge, not to sharpen. It's just to straighten. So that's for a honing steel, and I'll tell you how to use it in just a second. The diamond steel has powdered diamond dust on the surface. Use it the same way as the honing steel, but it does remove a little bit of metal and it is actually sharpened. So let me show you how to use it. I'll just take my 10 inch shaft knife, I'll put my steel straight up. Now if I put my knife blade at 90 degrees, I cut it in half once, that's 45. Cut it in half a second time, it's around 20, 22 degrees, or you see my finger there, I use my fingertip to set the angle for 20 degrees. And then I just very lightly, on both sides of the knife, go through the whole length, 20 degrees, four or five times, and that's it. That's how you straighten. You should do this every single time you pick up a knife. Every day, whenever you take the knife, four or five swipes, that's it, you're ready to go. Now, when the honing steel isn't doing the trick, and you still fail the cut on contact test, it's time to pull out the diamond steel. And use it the same way. There's my 90, there's my 45, there's my 20, 22. Put my finger here to find the angle. And you just can go both directions if you like. So what you always want to remember is we want to cut on a forward thrust, never by pulling the knife. Now, we're going to start off with what we call a high cut, because a high cut, the food is extra tall, and we're starting from a high position and ending in a low position. So using my claw, I guide my knife, and I pull back, and I just go all the way to the board. Now, one thing that this other finger, my index finger, can do is push the food off. So now I want to demonstrate a low cut. A low cut, we use a 10 inch chef knife and two inches of the blade over here. Now what we want to do is put the knife on blade on the board and do not lift it. You want to drag and drop, drag and drop and cut on the forward push. So if I put my food under here, that's the cut. And that's just effortless because we have so much leverage working with us. So now that I've cut the tomato, my knife is dirty. What's the correct way of cleaning it? Well, we definitely don't want to wipe it with our hands because we can get cut. 
So the correct way, over here I have a paper towel and I wet one side and the other side is dry. And I go like this to clean it off and then to dry it. You can put some antibacterial soap on this side and make sure it's disinfected. And then it goes back in the box. Remember, when you want to move the food, don't ever use the edge to scrape. You want to use the back side of the knife to move the food. So now we're going to do an onion. I go again for my 10 inch chef knife. And please note that there's the, the root and the stem. All we want to do first is cut off the stem using our high cut. Okay. And then we want to cut all the way through the onion like this, so we have two halves. Then we want to peel off the skin. So now that we have our peeled onion, let me show you the correct way of cutting it. Note that our root is still intact, and we're going to leave it intact. We're going to make vertical cuts through the onion like this. And then with a very open palm, keeping our blade away from our hand, make a horizontal cut, one or two. And then let's pull it back for our low cut. And then we can turn it around like this to get the most out of the onion so we don't waste it. And then what we can do is something that is called a rolling chop, which a lot of people like to do, and especially when you have a knife this long, very easy to do. Then to pick up the food, again, I go to my Asian cleaver, pick this up, and go in the fry pan. Okay. So now let's learn how to cut a pepper the right way. Now one thing that I failed to mention before is you always want to try to give yourself a flat surface so it's safer for you to cut the food. See how that kind of rolls? We don't want that to be unsafe. So the first thing let's do is give ourselves a flat surface. Now it's very stable. All right, and then we're going to flip it around and cut the other end off. And we have that. So then we want to take the tip, which is going like this. And then we're just going to open it up, pull out the clump. And now let's take our paring knife and cut out this white part, which is very bitter. And cut away from you. Let's do our low cut, maybe the food is short. We use our claw, we use our 10 inch shaft. And we can turn it 90 degrees, go like that. And now we make our claw, pull it together, and let's do our low cut. So let's do a melon. We need our carving knife right here. I, you know, I like to use the carving knife for the melon. And the first thing, of course, we want to do, again, is give ourselves a flat surface to work with using our pinch and claw. We cut right there, and now we have a flat surface. So uh, basically, we want to uh, cut off both ends. And now we have a flat surface on both sides. And then cutting away from us, we want to use this carving knife to basically cut around the skin, keep the knife turning. So get the skin all the way off. Cut right through the center, all the way down to your board, and then it's time to clean out the seeds with a spoon. Just take a spoon, fire around here, and then with my 
pinch and my claw. Fingernails at 45 degrees. A push, high cut. I'm going to go through. And then I'm going to hold this with my finger so I can pull the knife out. And then flick it down. this, and make one cut all the way through, and we have our melon. So I just want to introduce something new that we're starting to make available to our customers. It's a cut resisting glove for those of you who still slip and get cut sometimes. So just to cut this carrot like this, if I did miss and cut here, I'm not going to get hurt. So it's just an extra precaution you can use, just something extra for safety.